Time now for Sits and Sarah. This is where I got 60 seconds to talk with my face. Start the clock, please. It's fun. Thank you. Here's what's on my mind this morning. Our Canadian national women's soccer program have played in the biggest games on the biggest stages in the world, but arguably the biggest stage of their life could come in 13 days and not on a soccer field. According to various reports, politicians in Ottawa have asked members of Canada's national team to a hearing in order to give their side of the current pay dispute with Canada's soccer. They just competed in a Florida tournament under protest and say they have not been paid since 2021. It should also be noted that Canada soccer president Nick Bontis and other members of that organization will also testify in front of MPs a few days later on March the 20th. I don't trust Canada soccer. They move in the shadows. They're accountable to no one. But that's starting to change. And for players like Christine Sinclair and Janine Becky, I expect them to do what they always do in facing adversity. The one thing this entire program has always done when facing adversity. They kick ass and they win. <laughs> to every woman in that program, I wish you the best. James Sharman joining us here on Sid Zixero. Sharms, where does this go? This is one of the most unique soccer stories I've ever seen in this country. What happens next? Well, listen, when the government's involved, um, Canada Soccer will have to um, divulge all their financials, if they haven't already. I I'd heard that they, they were prepared to do that, but I've heard nothing since then. And then we'll find out, right, you know, what the situation of this, this association is right now. Um, there are reports, and I've heard this myself as well, that, that the budgets were very similar between the men and the women for many years, up until the most recent World Cup cycle, which obviously, uh, you know, for the men, it went longer than, than previous times, getting all the way to the World Cup. So, you know, th there's many layers to this, this issue. It's not quite as simple as they're good, they're bad. It really isn't. But when the government's involved, that, that takes it to the next step. Also, w when the government's involved, FIFA might get involved too. So that, that adds another layer to this, this story. Now, bear in mind, the next window is in April, right? They're playing France in France. They'll illegally be able to strike at that point. Um, so that's a really interesting window, almost a deadline to get something sorted out here. The men have a window in March, which could be very powerful as well. If there really is that solidarity between the men and the women, as we hear there is, that's an opportunity for the men to make a statement as well. So a really interesting few weeks for sure in this situation. Uh, again, it's a World Cup year. Should remind people of that. Women's World Cup is this July. But to, but to emphasize the point that James just made, I can't say it enough, and it's one of the, one of the biggest ones here, because you're right, FIFA does not like when governments start sticking their nose in the federations. It's a big no-no when it comes to FIFA. So we'll see what happens there. On another note, I just want to announce to everyone at home, I've been doing this segment for the last two years. Um, starting Monday, just programming note, Sitzik Cero will not happen in this current form. Uh, we're going to talk a lot of sports on this show, I guarantee it. But in this way, it's going to change a little bit. I just want to thank a lot of people who I know in the business, like James Sharman, who I believe has made the most appearances on this segment compared to anyone else. I want to thank everyone who's done this. It's been, it, it's been a real joy to do. It's not, these are no, normal sports hours for friends of mine. So I want to thank everyone. And we're going to talk a ton of sports on the show. But, Sharms, I want to thank you. You've been doing this a lot. Appreciate you, man. Listen, pal, there's very few people I get up for 6.40 in the morning for. <laughs> um, and if you're the first face I see, I'm happy about that. Yeah. So I always thought that would be a nightmare for you, for this to be the first face you see. It actually was a complete nightmare. Night he terror, is, uh, I'm, and, and not just because of the compliment, he's one of the good people in the business. James Sharman, love you, man. We'll talk again soon. I'm still going to bug Thanks, you, just maybe later in the morning. Love you, man. <laughs> Sounds good to me. All right. Uh, it's a